Hi, this is Mike Lewis from the Fender Custom Shop. Today we're gonna to talk about the 70th anniversary Fender Broadcaster guitar. This guitar has got a long story that actually started back in the late 40s. In those days, uh, the Fender guitar was primarily a lap steel guitar, or what was known as a Hawaiian guitar. A uh, Hawaiian because it was played like this. So that's where the, the term Hawaiian style came from. And that was the most popular type of electric guitar at the time. And as the decade was going on, uh, Fender Sales at the time came to, to Leo Fender and said, hey, you know, we need a Spanish-style electric guitar. Spanish style means played like this, okay? So when you hear me say Spanish electric, that means, you know, held, held in your lap like this. So Leo gets to work, starts creating things, and by the end, end of the decade, he's got some prototypes. And the very first guitar that came out in 1950 was known as the Esquire, and it had one pickup. It had a pine body and no truss rod in the neck. Uh, people were a little bit nervous about that no truss rod thing, uh, so he you know, soon started adding truss rods to them. But then you know, everyone said, hey, we like this guitar, it's really different and it sounds great, but we really want two pickups. So he started adding a second pickup to the Esquire, and it became known as the Double Esquire, it was available both ways, one pickup or two. And then it kind of got confusing, I suppose, and people would say, well, which is it, one or two? So they discontinued the Esquire completely and reintroduced it as a double pickup model called the Broadcaster. The Broadcaster name came from radio broadcasting. At that time, that was the only form of media out there, so you were broadcasting all the time. There was no television, there was no anything else. So, Guitar gets released in the 1950s as the broadcaster. People freaked out, totally different. People call it the boat paddle, uh, made fun of it. New players came along and looked at it and said, man, I can really do something with this. And they started playing and creating new music and it made sounds that they'd never heard before. So Fender releases the broadcaster and everything's going great. And the next thing they know, you get this telegram from the Fred Gretsch Manufacturing Company saying that, hey, we've got a registered trademark on the name Broadcaster. And yes, they had a uh, banjo and they had a drums kit. And you can see here, uh, Gretsch has reissued the Broadcaster drum kit as well. Dang, you know what I mean? It's like, wow, we got this good thing going. Now what do we do? We got to change the name or whatever. So what Leo did was they cut off the Broadcaster on the decal and it just had Fender on it. And later the collectors dubbed that guitar the No Caster. And it's, but he kept putting that on there until the labels ran out. And then they thought of a new name, the Telecaster. And um, you can only imagine that it was named Telecaster because television was something new and upcoming and it was the future. So let's look to the, let's look to the future. But getting back to the Broadcaster, it was only made for a very short time. There weren't that many produced uh, with the name Broadcaster on it. Uh, the original ones are uh, some of the most highly collectible guitars out there. Now, about 10 years ago, when we were looking at guitars for the Fender American Vintage Series, uh, in this one particular collection, uh, there was a Broadcaster. And knowing that this anniversary was coming up in nine or 10 years, we thought, let's detail this out. This is a really, really nice example. So we took the guitar all apart, measured every bit of it, took microscopic photos of every nook and cranny of it, measured all the electronics and the hardware and the pickups and everything like that, and just saved those specs for this reissue. Now, and what we're doing this year with the uh, custom shop is we're gonna have a team-built version and a master-built version. The master-built version, there'll be just 70 guitars built. Each builder will build a few. Uh, we've got 12 master builders, so each one of them will do a, a couple of these guitars. And then on the team-built side, 
uh, we'll, we'll be doing a uh, NOS version, which is new old stock, new and shiny, not beat up. And then a journeyman relic, which is what this one is, just a little bit aged. And then a regular relic and a heavy relic. And those will be available all year uh, based on the order input that we get from the market. So if you want one, you have until December 31st to order one. So let's get into how it sounds and uh, the various specs and features. So at first glance, it looks like a regular Blackguard Telecaster or a Nocaster uh, because they all came around the same time. But uh, a lot of these guitars in this time period were this color, like this blonde kind of color. And you wonder why uh, blonde electric guitars were so popular. Uh, is because they look really good on black and white TV, really pop, and uh, as, a, as opposed to disappearing there into the black and white. I think when we all see this, you know, it kind of hits us right here. Uh, it means a lot to us when we see this uh, black pickguard and sort of yellowish butterscotch color. We call this faded no caster blonde, uh, and you can get it in various levels of aging, dark, light, almost really light blonde or white, but uh, this is just faded. No caster blonde, but you know, it's got the broadcaster decal up here. And that's when you see that, you know, that's when your, your heart kind of feel it, you know. So the, the original guitar we looked at, it had a couple things going on with it that we've never done uh, uh, in our current models that we do in the custom shop. One is this particular neck shape. Now they were all different from guitar to guitar. You know, a lot of people say, oh, the old guitars all had really big necks. Well, not all of them did. Some of them were, were thinner, some of them were huge and fat, some of them had kind of a V-shape or a U-shape to them. Uh, this particular one just had a really nice feel to it, so we duplicated it and reused it on this model. It's got a slightly narrower nut than uh, what you would call standard, I suppose. So it feels, you know, feels a little bit different down here than a lot of the other things that we do. The fingerboard radius, uh, a lot of the old guitars, and we've talked about this in other videos, I mean, everyone thinks that the old original fingerboard radius on a Fender is seven and a quarter inches. Well, a lot of them were, but many of the ones we've looked at had actually nine and a half inch radiuses, and some of them actually had a compound radius from seven and a quarter to nine and a half up here, meaning the curvature of the fingerboard, right? And you got to know that none of that was intentional. They just the way they came out because uh, they're all made by hand. So we thought, hey. Let's make ours with a, the compound radius, seven and a quarter to nine and a half up here. It really feels like an old, old guitar. Frets on here uh, are just a tiny bit bigger than what the original frets were. Uh, it's really hard to find an original example of one of these guitars where the frets have not been sanded down four or five times, so, uh, or refretted. So this is a, a new fret that's slightly, slightly taller than the original, just to give you room for you know 20 years, 30 years later when you have to uh, do a fret job because you can't put your guitar down. You know you love it so much and you're just wearing the frets out. Up here, you'll see that the plug for the truss rod is maple. You know the original guitars had no truss rod, so there was no plug up here. And who knows? I mean, maybe the uh, the original ones had the maple plug because they wanted to maintain that look. And then they changed it to the walnut later because it was a hassle, who knows? But I, I've seen some with the maple plug, some with the uh, walnut plug come out the same year, who knows? But we thought it was interesting uh, to use the maple plug, so we did. So that's what's going on with the neck. Body is an ash body. The uh, pickups in the electronics, the pickups in here are what we call the 5051 black cards. Now these are the closest thing to the original uh, that we've ever done, and uh, I'll play a little bit here on the bridge. You can hear what it sounds like. Super strong, super powerful, very open. What's going on with these pickups? is the magnets are Alnico 3s, and they're a little bit bigger diameter than what we're used to seeing on a Telecaster. And the wire is 43 gauge wire, so a little bit thinner than what is used in modern pickups. 
the beauty of the 43 gauge wire is you can wrap more turns around the pickup, around the bobbin, and in combination with these thicker magnets, it kind of equals a real juicy, real juicy tone. <laughs> The neck pickup, uh, the earliest ones we, that we looked at, had Alnico five magnets, and also the larger diameter, and also the 43 gauge wire. So again, you can get more turns wrapped around that bobbin, and the bigger Alnico five magnet, which is a brighter, louder pickup uh, magnet, allows you to get this big, fat neck pickup sound. <laughs> Listen to that balance between the neck and the bridge. So usually on a modern telly, the neck pickup is nowhere near as loud as the bridge. Well, the way this is set up, it's almost equal volume. Now you may have noticed that when I was playing the neck pickup, I moved the switch to the middle. Well, that's the way the original guitars were wired. There's no tone control on the broadcaster. Pickup switch down here in the rear, you got volume. And this knob is a blend for the neck. So all the way clockwise is bridge. All the way counterclockwise is bridge and neck. Now you might notice that that bridge and neck sound is a little different than a normal telly. That's because there's a 10K resistor in here that's lowering the volume of that neck pickup just a little bit when they're both engaged together. Now, the forward position on the original broadcaster, it was just neck with a big fat capacitor that made the guitar sound like, like this, like the tone control was all the way off. Well, we wondered like, well, why would they think they needed that? Well, you gotta remember that the electric bass had not been invented yet. So, hmm, maybe that's why. Needed a bassy sound. But today, nobody uses that sound, so we changed the wiring just a little bit and added a, a, a much smaller value cap. So it just rolls off the highs and that 10K resistor kicks in. So you get just a little bit lower volume and a little bit rolled off tone. So let's hear the neck by itself without the cap. the cap. So it kind of sounds like a regular Chelly neck pickup. But then you want to kick in that. All right, let's talk about this blender a little bit more. So in the rear position, knob all the way up, full bridge. And you can slightly blend in that neck. You start to hear it now. turning it back just a little bit to bring in just a little bit of that neck. And you really can't hear that it's a neck and bridge together, but it just fattens up that bridge. There's full out. And those are the lost broadcaster tones, ladies and gentlemen. 
You can't get these sounds on a regular Telecaster. Now, if all this is too much for you, you can't deal with this all new wiring and different switching, in the case comes a completely separate control setup, control plate, pots, switch with the modern Tele wiring. But all you gotta do is just solder a couple wires and you got that. So that's really cool and that's really the broadcaster. For more information and all the detailed specs, please visit FenderCustomShop.com. Thanks a lot. Thank you.